All right, guys, a lot of you have been asking about it. I'm going to do a comparison video on the 1038 Challenger and the 8400 John Deere. Now, if you're maybe new to the channel, this is our tractor. We've had this tractor for a year and a half now. This is a demo tractor from AgPro, our local John Deere dealer. This is a tractor that we are interested in. They brought it out, we demoed it. Um, I'm getting ready to take it back here today or tomorrow, sometime in there. I want to do a quick video on comparing them. There's quite a bit of differences. For example, that is a E23 power shift. This is a single speed CVT transmission. So some differences there. There's 20 horsepower advantage on this tractor versus that tractor, but I mean, those are just model differences. I mean, you can get this all the way up to 500 horsepower. I don't know what the John Deere fixed frames go up to. I think 410 on the new ones, maybe. We'll get in the cabs, we'll look at them, compare, I'll give you my thoughts, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. It's, it's raining, that, it wasn't supposed to rain. That wasn't, that wasn't part, of the, part of the script. Okay, so first we're gonna start off with the 1038. Like I said, this is our tractor. Uh, we have around 530 hours on this machine now. I think I put, I probably put 350 of them on it. Plant with this tractor. We did vertical tillage with it last year. And then we ended up running a 1300 bushel grain cart on it all fall. So I'm pretty familiar with it. I like this tractor. I like it a lot. Uh, let's talk about some of the advantages of it. It's very fuel efficient. It's a very low revving tractor. I think it maxes out 1800 RPMs. So with the CVT transmission, you're always hunting the lowest amount of RPMs needed to run a certain ground speed. So like if you start down a hill planting, for example, you look down and you're like going 900 RPMs. It doesn't even sound like the tractor's running at that point. It's another thing, it's extremely quiet. We'll go ahead and start it up. I mean, the cab is just awesome in this machine. It's very quiet. It's very spacious. Disregard how dirty it is. Washed it up yesterday, haven't vacuumed it out yet, but I mean, the cab's very spacious. And yeah, that's pretty handy. As far as operator comfort goes, I think this tractor pretty much takes the cake. Seat's extremely comfortable. One thing they advertised is how much it rotates around and it does it. I mean, it goes pretty far around. You got this little headrest right here. You can bump that out of your way so that you can get a, get a better look. That might be kind of a gimmick. I don't think I've, I mean, it gets bumped around, but I, I, I was never like with any other tractor. I was like, man, I wish I could move the headrest, but it does do that. Now, when I first got in this tractor, no, this is also basically the same thing as a 1038 Fent tractor. So I'm sure someone in the comments is going to call this a yellow Fent. It is a yellow Fent. If I get out and look at the serial number on it, it says Fent right on the tag. In fact, right there, it says Fent on those those uh, plastic covers. So this is a yellow Fent. But when I first get in this machine, like the first time I was ever in it, I was like, man, this looks so complicated. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to figure it out. That's just because it was different than the uh, 420 Steiger I was running before this and the Magnum I was running before that. It is not that complicated. It's pretty easy to use, really. Uh, basically, to make it go forward, like, we're in park right now. It has an automatic park brake. As soon as you get out of the seat, it goes into park. To make it go forward, you don't have to take the park brake off. What you have to do is click this little button back here push and now we're moving so that's pretty simple uh, there's cruises there's cruise one and two you can set those to like when I'm planning I set my cruise at 5.8 mile an hour and it goes uh, I have a go and end sequence set up basically whenever I'm planning all I have to do is hit go and when I do that it drops my implement hits my AB line and we go up to my cruise speed and the three point implement I've not used a three point in this I don't think I've ever used it to hook up to my planner, I had to remove the quick hitch and I've just never put it back on. It's not real complicated. You set your depth and then you uh, you can set one of these remote levers to run the three point. Another thing, all of those can be set in the Accu terminal. I think that's what they call that monitor. But everything is color coded. For example, all the PTO buttons are yellow. Um, this is suspension and diff lock. That's, that's all green. You get the point. Now let's go into the Accu terminal. This thing, well, it took a while to get used to. I can make it steer. 
I can make it do all that stuff. That's really the main functionality I use out of this machine. I mean, it also controls all your tractor hydraulic settings and everything. I don't manage data through this just because I, we use climate, field view climate. So all my tractor data or planning data goes through it. Um, it's a lot simpler for me to use in my opinion. So that's just how I've always, always accomplished that. I'm trying to figure out if I can remember to see what kind of gallons per per hour and acre we've been using. Where this thing has been running the grain cart, that number is going to be pretty far off. I mean, pretty sure when I was planning, uh, I'd have to go back and look, but it was it was very economical. I think it was probably about the most economical planting tractor I've ever used as far as fuel consumption. I can't remember what the number was, but it was, I want to say it was like 0.3 or 0.4 gallons per acre. So it was very economical as far as that goes. I could be completely wrong. I almost hate to say that. I'm thinking it was 0.4. And when I was turbo tilling, I mean, we were using more fuel. We were pulling the tractor harder. So, I mean, there is that. But overall, this tractor is very fuel efficient. Now, a lot of people are going to ask about power. One thing I think, uh, for sure, CVT transmissions, they lose more power getting to the ground. I'm almost positive of that um, than a power shift. Um, but front wheel assist tractor I had before this one was a 340 Magnum and pulling that Turbo Max I didn't notice that this did like leaps and bounds better I mean it definitely pulled the Turbo Max fine depending on the soil types we were in we could easily pull it 10 and a half miles an hour sometimes we'd hit something that was a uh, heavier dirt and we would, we would drop down to eight and a half uh, just depends I never run this thing wide open like right, right there is wide open I always have it in fuel management so, just because I'm trying to save as much fuel as possible while using this machine. So therefore, it's always kind of trying to find that. It would probably pull better if I ran it full throttle all the time, but I mean, I want to save money. So that's why, that's why I do that. Yeah, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Like I said, the data management side of this modder, in my opinion, is a little clunky. Everything else, it's not bad. I mean, it's easy enough to adjust it, your settings in your tractor. Steering wise, I have had some software issues in the past. It's steering really well now. When this thing was working before the software issues, I was really impressed with how, steer, how how well it steered. It steered around the field better than my, my Pro 700 on my previous machine, I thought. Um, and AB lines, it, it, it's very aggressive how it locks on now. That was something when they updated it, just made it extremely aggressive. I've adjusted the sensitivities. But when you hit that AB line, you're, you're getting there quick. So I don't know if that's maybe another software update in the future that would tame that down. I kind of like it, um, but it's, it's, it's aggressive. Other things about this machine. Visibility wise, you do have a very large hood. I mean, it's a wide machine. Keep in mind though, this is a five, up to a 500 horsepower frame tractor. This is the exact same frame on the 1050. I believe the only thing that's different is maybe tire size. And I don't know if they beef the axles up or not. I think I heard that once, but I'm not 100% on that. But other than that, it's the same motor, it's the same frame. So really, to compare it to the, the 8400 over there, you'd almost need to be in one of their new 900 series tractors. I think those go up to 420 horsepower. To me, that'd be a much better comparison as far as like visibility and stuff on that tractor. I don't have one of those, and they didn't have those out whenever we got this machine. So, this is what we got. Um, couple things I don't really like about this tractor one thing they have this accessory rail right here it is nice you got all these sliders I mean, you can load that rail up with those sliders you can move monitors where you want them they got it to where you can tuck the wires in there and run them and make it everything look nice and neat but remember how I told you this thing swivels real far well it does you see a problem though if I got a monitor on this rail right here I'm gonna swivel right into the side of it so we built this thing um, we just basically made a bracket bolted it to that that piece of aluminum channel and it puts everything up above the monitor but the only thing is that bracket is very flimsy and when you get a lot of weight up here it will rattle and eventually you'll have to tighten these bolts up to me they could probably redesign that accessory rail and make that a little bit better that sounds like a pretty minor critique and it is but all these machines have a lot of accessories on them now I mean for this tractor was on a grain cart backup camera I believe that's my brother's entertainment. I think he just watched the Bengals on that iPad. It was not running that those scales. But if we were on a different grain cart system with uh, an iPad-based scale system, that would be there for that. Then you've got your tractor motors. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to hang on those rails. I wish that was a little bit, a little bit sturdier. 
Uh, other things, like I said, the, the motor, I wish it was a little bit simpler. It's not terrible. It's not It's not bad. It just it could be a little bit simpler, I feel. Other than that, I really like this machine. It's extremely comfortable to sit in all day. Performs well. Uses very little fuel. I mean, it has a government juice or def. That's what we call it. We call it government juice, but doesn't use a whole lot of that unless you're pulling hard. That's basically the same with any tractor though. If you're not pulling a lot of engine power, like running the cart, it didn't use much at all. Whenever I'm running the Turbo Max, I'm filling that thing up periodically, but I mean, that's just, that's just how that stuff works. But yeah, as far as visibility, I mean, you got that big hood, then you got your tank right there. So there's, you're kind of lacking visibility there, kind of lacking it there. But at no point in planning did that ever really bother me. Like I said, I came from a Steiger which, I mean, they're higher up, but they have a lot more stuff there. So that never really was an issue to me. I never, it never bugged me, I guess. And then visibility out the back, you can see your draw bar. That's a pretty major thing when you're, when you're hooking up to a piece of equipment. And I mean, over the fenders, I believe this is more where the cab sits on this tractor. It sits kind of, you're not right over top of the, of the axle. You're kind of a little bit in front of it, maybe. So you do have a little bit more fender back there, you see. But once again, it's never really an issue. One major thing that I don't, I'm pretty sure that tractor doesn't have it. If it does, it never found it. This tractor has what they call pedal mode. So right now, to make it move, I'm using this stick. When I pull back, it goes into neutral. If I put it in pedal mode, there's this button over here. Now when I push the stick, we are going into forward, but we're not moving. See that? That means we're in first, or we're in forward. There's a pedal. And we moved things where that's extremely useful running a grain cart loading truck that is awesome that is very nice for loading a grain cart it's very nice for hooking up to equipment it's very nice when you have to finesse something when you can just barely tap that pedal it, like right now we're still in that in forward so with this whenever i stop it goes in the neutral and i have to put it forward again not a big deal but i like the pedal mode that's something i would really miss if we went the green route yeah i, I like that quite a bit also like having these controls up here now, all your climate controls up here, all your lights are right here. Easy to find, easy to get to. But I think that's pretty much it. It has a great Bluetooth wireless or hands-free system. People always ask what this is hanging out up here. I use this. I usually don't use them in tractors just because they're usually terrible. They don't work with the crap. That one works wonderful. Like most machinery, it doesn't have a good AM radio. Dad always says he's not buying another piece of equipment if he can't pick up the AM stations a few cities down from us, but None of them do. Has plenty of cup holders. Still got coffee stains all over from when my brothers running the cart, but it has plenty of cup holders. There's cup holders down there. Lots of space for that. Got a cubby hole right here. This does have air vents blown in it, so you can keep water cool or a sandwich cool. You're not gonna keep it cold. Got this little pouch right here. This little, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I'd put stuff there, it works pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty much the cab in a nutshell. Let's talk about the specs of the actual machine. This is a 12.4 liter engine. This is a man engine. That's the people that make it. Um, and they're pretty much known for making low revving RPM engines. They have pretty good reputation overseas. And I think all the Agco products are kind of going towards that engine. So far, we're very impressed with it. Engine horsepower wise, it's rated at 380. That's why it's called a 1038 380. I think it has like a boosted horsepower which means like the max you'll get when you need it is 396 pto horsepower they claim is 350 i guess that's just this is just stats i'm reading from them from agco and then it has a 211 gallon fuel tank which i mean that seems to run me all day just fine this tractor is spec pretty heavy i don't know what it weighs that i'd have to look at the shipping paper but it is a pretty heavy tractor but now we will move on to the 8400 all right, while we're moving on to the deer, a couple things outside that just stand out to me. These are just little things you might not think of, but for example, the toolbox on the machines, this one is bolted to it. It's in the same place every deer toolbox is, I believe. On the 1038, the toolbox is actually right here. And it slides out and you can take it with you. On one hand, that's kind of a pain in the butt if you just need to grab a hammer real fast. On the other hand, when something breaks and I need to go fix it, I just grab the whole toolbox and take it with me now. Other little things, pretty sure both of them, you can dump the uh, the front suspension down. Like with this one, you can drop the suspension in the front of it to take that weight off. That's one big weight. Now, it's not a three-point hitch. Many people think that's a three-point hitch. That's solid. 
that does not move. That does not. That is an option on a Fent, not on a Challenger. See, told you it said Fent. But on the Challenger series, you, that's not a three point. That's just it's just a bracket for the weight. But you can drop that down. Uh, when we changed the uh, steering radius on this, it's another thing. This thing did not steer like crap when we got it. We adjusted the steering stops and we flipped the the duals, changed the spacing on a little bit. When we did that, we were able just to block it up and then drop the suspension to to, to get the get the tires off. Pretty sure you can do that with this one. In fact, I know you can. Um, they both have independent front suspension. They both ride very well, and they both have cab suspension. Back to the cab of the John Deere. All right, in this John Deere, this is the first new John Deere I've been in in a long time, and actually put hours on it. Um, first thing that jumps out, this is a power shift, which I knew that, that's we wanted to demo a power shift. This power shift system is very similar to uh, our old 8400. We actually have an older 8400, I believe it's a 1997 model. Same bump shifter in this one. This one does have the little wheel to set your cruise speed with, but it just felt very familiar when we got in this. Did not feel a whole lot different. I mean, it's obviously different, but I mean, as far as, well, how do I drive that? Hopped in there, I was able to do pretty much whatever I wanted. Uh, the three-point setup is very simple. I mean, the first thing I did with this was hook it to an inline ripper. It worked very well. That is my charging cord. That is my foot mount. I need to take that before they take the tractor. And the lights, I believe, are in the same place. Uh, turn signals, all that stuff was basically still the same. Now, the cab of this machine, it is a little bit smaller. Not much, it's still very comfortable, but the cab is smaller, there's a little bit less foot room. Like when I stretch my legs out, I do hit the window. Not so much in the other one, not a huge deal. I um, mean, this cab's still very comfortable, but the 1038 does have a bigger cab, and it's probably just a little bit more comfortable. Uh, probably, they're both very quiet, but it's probably a little bit more quiet in the 1038. Control-wise, say this is your uh, power shift. Put that in forward. Now we're, we're moving. And then I can adjust how fast we're going with this wheel. But uh, 1.6 is as slow as we're going to go in third gear, apparently. So right now we're in first gear. I've got it turned all the way down. We're cruising at 0.7 miles an hour. With that one, I can make it go 0.1. Uh, this is the E23 power shift, which really functionality-wise in the field as far as fuel economy, it performs very similar to an IVT or a CVT. The IVT is Deere's version of a CVT transmission. I was pretty impressed by it. Basically how it works, like a CVT, you set your ground speed, put it in forward, and it'll hunt through the gears to match, uh, in the RPM range, to match the ground speed that you've selected. Uh, as far as fuel economy, whenever I was running the turbo till, which is a vertical tillage tool, 30 foot, we were running around 11 to 12 gallons per acre, or hour, 11 to 12 gallons per hour. I don't remember what the gallons per acre was. I couldn't, I didn't run it very much with the turbo. With the Ripper, I've seen it go anywhere from 7 gallons per hour up to 19. And that's only a 5 shank Ripper, just depending on how hard we were pulling. And when we got into hard ground, a lot of people told me with the 400 horse tractor, there's no need to put it on a 5 shank Ripper. I did manage to stall this tractor out on a 400 or on a 5 shank Ripper when I hit a hard pan. Uh, part of the reason that happened, when we hit that hard pan, we were in the E23 uh, automatic mode, so it was hunting RPMs. I believe there's a setting you can adjust to how quick it boosts up the RPM range. I never tampered with that, and I'm pretty sure if I had just ran it full throttle, we probably wouldn't have stalled it. We probably just would have spun out if we would have quit pulling. The, the monitor on this, this is the John Deere 4600 monitor. I like it better than the AccuTerminal. That is one thing I definitely like better on the Deere side is the monitor. It seems simpler. Now, that said, I have no experience managing data in this. By that, I mean like telling it I'm planning in this field, all that kind of stuff. We're just doing tillage. This isn't our tractor. I never put our fields in there and all that stuff. But everything else about it seems very simple. It's simple enough that my father, who is 69 years old, he hopped in this tractor, oh, probably three or four days after we got done harvesting. And he was, I didn't even know he was over here. He called me and said, hey, how do I make it turn itself on the ends? I was like, wait a minute. You figured out how to put an AB line in it? That kind of surprised me, uh, but yeah, he he was felt right at home in it too. 
Uh, before we had went to Case IH and then eventually Agco, we were all John Deere, so he was pretty familiar with this control setup. And uh, yeah, I mean, they obviously didn't have monitors and GPS back then, but he was able to get the hangout pretty easy. Now this is just a duplicate monitor. And there's two of them in here. You do not need that one. Basically that's so you could have, like, like right now I have my auto steer screen on this one and then my tractor data over there. You can customize that. Like if I was planning, I'd have planner data on one and my auto steer on the other. That way I always can see those two things, which I, I like that. It's pretty nice. Or you can, you have the flexibility of just running one screen. But for me, I'd rather have all that data easily seen and accessible. This tractor has hands-free. I don't know how well it works. Never, never used it. I did connect to the Bluetooth. It's pretty neat. You can you can connect to your phone and all that stuff right here. You can change your music. It may sound stupid because I mean you can just do it right here too. But I like that. It's pretty cool. As far as comfort, like the seat, it's comfortable. Uh, I still prefer the seat in the other one. Uh, it does swivel. Probably pretty close to swiveling as far around as the Challenger, if not as far. I know at one time that marketed it as being the it turning the most. I don't know if it still does. One one really neat feature this one has, it does have an actual refrigerator in it. I mean, this is a full-fledged refrigerator. In fact, that's cold. Which, do you need a refrigerator and tractor? Of course not. Visibility. This tractor, no question, has more visibility. I mean, you can see the, you see the tires a little bit better. And it's got a much narrower hood. It is shorter to the ground. You do not set up as high as you do in that tractor. And to me, you sit further back over the rear axle in this particular tractor. Um, this one still has the quick hitch on it. Like I said, we do have a quick hitch for the Challenger. It's just not on at the moment. And you can probably see the uh, you can see the draw bar a little bit better. Like I say, I believe you sit back further on the axle in this one, and that would explain why you can see the draw bar better. They're both fairly simple on the back end. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on back there. I mean, you got your you got your cubby hole here. You got a little spot here for something. I don't know what you're gonna put there. There's a little spot there for something. Again, I don't know what you're gonna put there. And then you got this compartment here, which is pretty similar to that tractor. I mean, they all pretty much have some kind of compartment there. You got space back here behind the seat to fill up with manuals you'll never look at and flags and tape stuff like that that probably never get used. But that's pretty much the inside of this one in a nutshell. Um, things I didn't like about it, I don't think it's as smooth as the 1038. Um, you, I mean, it's still a power shift, so you can feel it shift. Some of them, I, mean, I believe they're changing a the clutch pack. You can feel it. It's It's got a little jerk to it. It's not bad. It is way better than our old 8400, but it is still there. I think that's just the nature of power shift. There's no accessory rail in this one. I don't know if this would go into things I don't like category or not, but there is spots for it. I mean, these little caps, they just screw in right here. Actually, that'd be something I like because they're very flexible. I think you can, you can pretty much make an accessory rail and put it wherever you want. There's These things, are, there's several of them throughout the cap. The steering wheel, it doesn't adjust as much as the one in the 1038. I, I, I like the steering wheel better than that one, as dumb as that may sound. And then the cab's a little bit smaller, not a huge deal, but it is smaller, it's something you notice. Uh, as far as things I don't like, fuel consumption seemed to be greater in this machine. I guess that'd be something I didn't like. And it feels like it's using more DEF for government juice. It seemed to pull the turbo tail better than that one, but I don't I don't know, it's a different transmission. They behave a little bit different, but it, it did seem like it pulled it pretty well. We turbo tailed with it, oh, 130, 40 acres with it pretty much all the same kind of ground but i don't know i didn't get to run it all those acres bj my brother he ran them in most of them but when i was in it it seemed like it was pulling it very well one thing i don't like about it i wish the fuel tank was bigger also this one only has a 175 gallon tank i think which again it's only 35 gallons but it just seemed like we were filling up a lot more often uh, i don't know what the the def tank is on it I, it doesn't seem like it's very big either but from the specs of the tractor this is a nine liter six cylinder engine this is rated at 400 horsepower with the boost i believe they say it goes up to 432 horsepower and then, yeah we've got a 178 gallon tank and then of course it's got the e23 transmission again this is just taken right off of the tractor spec website so i assume those are correct tires i mean this one has different tires on it they're wider they're bigger that's just 
that's specs. I mean, you can get the, that tractor spec with whatever kind of tires you want too. Weight package. This one has a heavy weight package on it, and so does that one. They're both they're both heavy tractors. Uh, you can tell this is a used tractor. You can tell that it was ordered with the intent of uh, strip tilling, some kind of tillage. Uh, it's weighted a little heavy for planting, in my opinion. But um, light package. Both machines have extremely good lights. This one has great lights on it. I was pretty impressed with them. That machine over there, it also has great lights on it. So in that aspect, they're very similar. One thing that this one seemed to do better than the Challenger, it seemed to throw the lights better out to the side. That one is fairly dark out to the sides, but if you look, I don't have any lights facing out to the side on that machine. I can adjust that. I never think of it till I'm in the tractor in the dark and I'm always in a hurry. So, But they both have great lights. Uh, this one might have had the edge there. Yeah, that's pretty much the deer in a nutshell. Um, oh, one more thing I really like about all John Deere is these remote covers. If you've been watching the channel, I've talked about that before. R8400 has them. I wish all tractors had those just because that's nice. Uh, about every tractor you can lock out a hydraulic if you want. Like if you're planning, you can turn on your vacuums and then lock it out. But this you can just cover it up. Then you don't have to worry about bumping it on accident and blowing the seals out of your planter vacuum. But yeah, that's pretty much the tractor in a nutshell. So get out of here now. Heater was just getting warmed up. Now I know a lot of you are going to ask. If you had to choose one, which would it be? That just depends on which tractor wins this pull-off. I'm not really going to have a tug-of-war. I don't think Ag Pro would like me doing that to their tractor, and I don't want to tear up our tractor. It would be pretty fun though. But as far as which tractor, if I had to pick what I go with right now, I don't think you can go wrong either way. I really did not want to like the John Deere, I'll be honest with you. I don't know why, I just haven't been a John Deere fan in a long time. That tractor was great. I got in it, I could think of no reason to dislike it. There's nothing about it that I was like, nope, that, it's out, other than the price, but they're all expensive. That tractor, same way. There's really nothing about it that just stands out and I just can't stand about it. it. To us, I mean, we are in the market for another tractor. We're trying to add a third high horsepower tractor to do strip tail with. It's probably, it's coming down to a 1038 and a John Deere, either 8400 or an 80, or 90, 8370. Those are the two we're pricing at the moment. I don't know. It's going to come down to price. That's really all there is to it. Uh, we buy things based on price and dealer service. I feel like the service from Ag Pro is probably going to be pretty good. I know we have good service with Ohio Ag. That's our local dealer. So yeah, that's how we're going to make this decision. I guess if you have all green, if you're okay with switching monitors, there's nothing wrong with that tractor and vice versa. If you have all yellow and you're okay with a different operating system, there's nothing wrong with that one. I would base it more on dealer's uh, support because eventually you are going to need a dealer no matter if you go yellow or green or a different shade of green and this green at some point you're going to need your dealer so that's how i would make my decision but i'm not scared to end up with this tractor now but thanks for watching guys if you like what you've seen follow us on instagram and twitter at brian's farm news facebook at brown farms 